Prime Hello. Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Ambassador His Excellency Peter Chen, other members from the Taiwanese Embassy, P.S. Claudius Emanuel, Cabinet Secretary Benjamin Emanuel, and officials from the Department of Treasury, Cabinet colleagues, everyone, good morning, and we'll welcome you to a brief ceremony for a big check presentation, which I know um, everyone inside of here, your constituents will benefit from. Um, but um, right now, Prime Minister and um, His Excellency will address us um, on this important occasion. I will now like to call on Ambassador His Excellency Peter Chen to deliver some brief remarks. Today, I have the great pleasure of delivering on behalf of the government and people of Taiwan funding for CTP. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian-Ukraine war in Europe, which has impacted daily life and the global economy, when I saw all the items in every constituency covered by, the, by this CTP, I thought of a twist of something that Charles Dickinson expressed in one of his novels. This was the worst of times, but it could be the best of times. This was the season of darkness, but it could also be the season of light. What I mean to say is that we gather here not only for handovering funding, not for simply kicking off some projects, but to combine our efforts to improve people's lives. To bring in citizens of light together and tend to it side by side. Through CDP, basic and critical livelihood infrastructures will be provided, and residents will benefit from jobs created during those projects. As President Tsai Ing wen said, Taiwan can help, and Taiwan is helping. Taiwan is proud to be a partner. The Honorable Prime Minister Pierre's vision and approach in improvement implementing CDP is admirable as it is inspiring. The WHO could learn a thing or two from Honorable Prime Minister on how to emphasize inclusiveness, transparency, and accountability, as Honorable Prime Minister stressed in the 2022-2023 budget address. As the WHO Assembly is approaching, I would also like to take this opportunity on behalf of the government and people of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Our heartfelt appreciation to the Honorable Prime Minister Pierre and the government and people of Senusha for voicing support of Taiwan's inclusion in the international community and recognizing Taiwan's contributions to the global health system and post-pandemic recovery. Taiwan will continue to stand by the government of Senusha to strengthen its social and economic development and achieve the UN SDGs. Together, we will get through the tunnel and into the light. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Chen. I would now like to call on Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre to deliver remarks. Thank you very much. Um, let me recognize Your Excellency Peter Chen, cabinet colleagues, staff of the Ministry of Economic Development, the Permanent Secretary, the Accountant, the Accountant General, the Coordinator of the CDP Program, members of the Taiwanese Embassy in St. Lucia. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. When, um, it was, when I announced this morning to my colleagues that we would have been having a check handover ceremony for the CDP, I saw two emotions. <laughs> I saw joy. One of our colleagues says that it's an emotional time because a, a tear should come to his eye. He says a time when we should be, sh he, somebody should shed tears. And I really understood what he was saying because six of us, were in this, not in this room, but six of us were in this parliament before. And I'll mention the, 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 our names, although, although you know them. 
<coughs> the Honorable Sean Edwards, the Honorable Moses Jabatis, the Honorable Alva Baptiste, the Honorable Kenny Anthony, the Honorable Ernest Hille, who is not here, and myself. We were in this parliament for five years. And the genesis of that CDP program came from an initiative by the Honorable Stevenson King, <coughs> who was Prime Minister at the time. When Dr. Robert Lewis, who is now, and it's a conf how the ideas, how things just flow. Dr. Robert Lewis was the Minister for Education at the time, and now he's the ambassador in Taiwan. And he approached um, the then Prime Minister Stevenson, Stevenson King and said to him, why are parliamentary reps so powerless in their constituencies? <clears throat> and we had a chat, the, the then Prime Minister and myself, and, and during those days, there was a lot more cordiality. And there was a lot more cordiality, and there was, there was a lot more purposefulness in the dealings of government. The, 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 the bitterness and the vindictiveness was not, was not that in, in, in bread in the, in the country. And the then Prime Minister Stevenson King said, all right, well, let's put something together. And, and we, we conjured the, 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 the phase constituency development program <coughs> where every parliamentary rep applied to the then Prime Minister. There was a unit called the constituency development unit. It was which mini in the Ministry of Infrastructure it was. I think it was in, in, either in the Prime Minister's office or Ministry of Infrastructure. And then <coughs> we applied <coughs> and we didn't get all, but we got some. We surely didn't get all, right, Prime Minister? For <laughs> <laughs> but we got something. <coughs> and that every constituency rep got some in the constituency. But for the last five years, from 2016, the parliamentary representatives in opposition hadn't got one cent directed through them into their constituencies. And I say that, somebody might tell me it's, that's not a place for that. But we cannot make the same errors of the past. And we, must, we cannot reinvent the history. For the last five, from 2016 to 2021, the parliamentary representative for Castries East, on Sunday, it's going to be 25 years since I'm representing this constituency. <coughs> And we never, no one ever called me and said to me, parliamentary rep, what do you want for your constituency? And I, I swear and I pledge that will not happen under my rule. <laughs> it will not happen because it's not right. Because when you get elected, you don't get elected to represent people of the Labour Party. You get elected to represent the people of the constituency. And I can assure you, Mr. Ambassador, that the CDP funds will be shared among the constituencies. <laughs> and it will be used for the purposes that they are meant to be used. It will be used for social, for social, some social needs, because the system will, will necessitate that you have to do some social interventions. So the money will be used for some social interventions and for some infrastructural interventions. That's how it's going to be used for social infrastructure. And the system is going to be accountable, but it's going to be transparent, but also has to be agile. Agile, transparent, and accountable. Because our people need help. You said it clearly. You see, you, you said clearly, the effects of the Ukraine war, they are real. Later today, the cabinet will be considering how we can reduce the cost of food in this country. Our options are very, very, very limited. Our options are limited, but we will try. The needs of the country are deep. The infrastructural needs, the social needs, the educational needs, they are very, very deep. But we will have to find a way. And support from governments like yours go a long way. 
So I want you to express our thanks to, the, to, to, to your president. And we hope that this collaboration, this mutual respect that our two countries share, respect for the people, respect for our, for our desire to manage our own affairs, that respect, and the respect which we as a government maintain that the internal affairs of countries must not be the subject of external in interference. We've maintained that, that position. This is our position as far as Taiwan is, our con is concerned. This is our position as far as Cuba is concerned. And this is our position as far as Venezuela is concerned. The, in the, the, the internal affairs, there must be no interference in the internal affairs of nations. It's our stated position, and that's what we, we, will, we will live by. So I want to thank you. <coughs> we will use the money in good stead. We'll invite you to see how we used it. The country is craving. The people are craving for some sort of assistance. Our budget is going to unfold. I'm happy with, with the way in which you made, you made these funds available in a very speedy fashion. I hope going forward you can assist us in making other things available in a very speedy fact, in a very speedy manner. Because we need, it's okay to get the pledges, but we need to put it on the ground. And this is a problem that we, we, we face all the time with IFCs and our donors. They make the pledges, but it takes years before the resources reach, reach, reach the country. So you make, a, you make a promise to the electorate, and you cannot do it because the money hasn't reached. So I hope we can, we can expedite these, these matters, and we look forward to a long relationship with you. Convey our thanks to your president, and we hope that we can continue in this, in this vein, mutual respect for each other for the benefit of our country. I want to thank the staff of the, of the Ministry of, of Economic Development and the, the Accountant General. <coughs> In particular, the Accountant General has to manage, manage these, these, these dollars. And I can assure you, he doesn't, let, he doesn't allow them to slip easily. <coughs> but there will be full accountability and full transparency. I thank you very much on behalf of the Cabinet. Thank you. <coughs> We will have the check handing over ceremony, which will go into the consolidated fund and be received by the Accountant General. So, Accountant General, please join me. Ambassador Chen. So, And since PS is here, PS, you will do a closing remark since you give a thank you letter. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Lewis, Ambassador Chen, Honorable Prime Minister, members of Cabinet, colleagues from the Department of Economic Development. It's a great pleasure on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia to receive yet another token from the government and people of Taiwan. As we know, the constituency development project is a significant contributor to the socioeconomic advancement of our people. And so it gives us a great pleasure in welcoming it once again as another gesture. Of course, it's part of uh, the bilateral cooperation agreement that the PM would have had the pleasure to sign along with Ambassador to chronicle another five years of assistance from our friendly partner. So on behalf of everyone, the people in the government of St. Lucia, I wish to thank the Ambassador and, and his team for continuing to demonstrate um, the importance of continuing to assist St. Lucia to keep the friendly relationship going between our two countries. Thank you very much.